Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. Uh, this time we're going to continue talking about the Sys internal tools and it is the time for Process Explorer. Um, as you remember, I showed you how to download, install, and run Sys internal on your computers on one of the previous videos. And in this case, I decided to uh, run it directly from the unzipped folder instead of using the um, Sys internal live because this way is faster. And again, this is my test environment. Uh, there are situations in which you would like to use Sys internal lives. It is super useful, but uh, not in the case for this video. Uh, so remember when you have the sys internal tools you're going to have or de depending on the tools you're going to have um, one or two different versions of the tools you're going to have a regular x86 and a x64 uh, version of it depending on the architecture that uh, of the cpu of your computer you'll select uh, whichever tool corresponds to your unique architecture. So um, Process Explorer is one of the most uh, used tools of, from Sys internals. And as you could see, it is going to allow you to see in a graphical and well-organized window um, the different processes, threads, and, and a lot of information that is running on your system at any given time. We could have a, a very long video just going over the ins and outs of Process Explorer, but this is not the case. This is not why I'm creating the, vir the video to go like very deep into it because there may be situations or there may be topics that are not related to you or other people, but if you learned how to access the tool and how to navigate the tool and, and interpret the information that is shown to you, you can do further investigation with the tool and that's the goal of these videos. Right? So in my case, I am running the tool on one of my test computers. I just want to show you a couple of uh, quick things right here. Uh, this is the uh, default view for Process Explorer. Uh, and if you come down here, uh, you go to About and it's going to tell you the version of the application that you're running on. If you're running an older version, it's going to look different or the default view is going to be different. Uh, one of the main points for Process Explorer, if you go to View, uh, you could uh, divide or have different uh, different views, right? Like if you go here that says Show Lower Pain. So when you click on that, it is going to divide the screen, right? And then depending on what you select, the processes that you select on tab, maybe that's going to populate information in the lower pane and it's going to show you more information about the processes. So if you come here, for instance, you're going to see a couple of uh, threads and depending on the process you select, you're going to see DLLs right here. Oh, not, not in this case, but you're going to see the more threads that are associated to that specific process. And, uh, and again, depending on on the one you select, maybe these fields are going to be populated. I personally don't use it, but perhaps you have a, a situation where this could be relevant to you. So I'm just going to remove this. And I just like to uh, see my entire processes. And again, who uses Process Explorer? Again, system administrators, network administrators, security analysts, security engineers. Uh, people doing threat hunting. There's a whole bunch of reasons why this can be used. It's not only to um, for network administration. It's not only for hacking or for um, or, or for in intelligence. There are many reasons for that. But what you need to know about this. This is the default view, right? Uh, these colors they do have a meaning. As you could see, some of them are like light 
whatever color this is this looks like a pinkish color uh, this is like purple or light blue some of them are green uh, you know like all that has a meaning and if you do a search for that you'll be able to find out what it means uh, I, I can tell you this that I believe uh, green is when the process is actively running like these guys you know they turn green and they, they change colors so you can do your investigation on that but if you come to this section on the view uh, section and you come down to the columns you can add or remove these columns right here to display the information that you would like to see in this case if I want to see whatever processes or are running you see I selected here like it shows that it's running I have it in under windows status and you have the sessions command line and if you do that you'll see that you're gonna have more uh, a new tab is gonna be added to it right so you could see it right here I added command line which is tell me where that executable is that's pretty much what you're looking for but again some of this information can be found if you just double click on the process uh, right and then you would go to um, the options in here the image and you're gonna see where this process it's running from and you're gonna see more information about it if this is a network process and it has an established TCP session if you go to TCP IP you'll see a, an IP address here uh, another uh, useful um, information and actually this is super useful if you go back to the image and then um, you would like to know if 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 there is a if that is a legit image right like for instance right here uh, as you could see let me expand this column uh, let me change this for whatever reason is not uh, showing the uh, the top of the uh, of the um, of the column is not showing the entire name but if you come down here let me go down to select column that is verified signer so as you know um, the windows files are signed by a certificate from Microsoft right if you uh, if you see for instance like uh, this file right here that you know is a Microsoft operating system file right and as you could see it has been verified by sys internals in this case process explorer to be to be using the official Microsoft certificate if you don't see that right and and this is something very very interesting especially when you're dealing with malware because malware is like you could name a file whatever you want to name it like if you create malware or um, you are troubleshooting malware you'll notice that uh, some of those files are going to have similar names to legitimate files within Windows. The reason for that is that they're trying to disguise those files or confuse, confuse people who um, don't dig deeper into just looking at file names. So if you see something that is not uh, Microsoft Windows Publisher like if you see another file that has like a weird certificate for instance then that raises suspicious right especially if it is a file that you know is part of the operating system and that by default should be should be signed by a Microsoft, by a Microsoft certificate so that's one of the things that you could uh, look into another way to get to that this is just a tab and actually if you want to verify them all you go to options I believe it's right here you see like verify uh, image signature so like you can turn it on and off like in this case I turned it you know like off 
but let's pick, uh, for instance, like this um, Adobe, right? You know that this is not a Microsoft file, right? Like it's Adobe. But if you go to properties, you come them here, you'll see that you can't verify this because it is not part of uh, Microsoft. But if you um, look deeper into it, you're going to see more information about the file that may be uh, useful to you when troubleshooting computers or when troubleshooting or, or doing some type of um, security analyst work. Uh, something that I would um, stress when you are dealing especially with malware analysis, it's pay attention to the root directory and the location where the file is, right? Like right here, the path, and you're going to see this. If I hadn't done the verification before, like I have the option to click verified, right? But you'll see it, it's already verified down here. You know, if we pick, uh, for instance, if we pick, um, uh, calculator, which calculator right here? All right, let's just calculator. <clears throat> so pay attention to the location of the file because chances are that if you are troubleshooting, and again, if you're doing malware analysis, and you see a file that is supposed to like windows files they run from their default location right it, it is not that you know like different uh installations of windows are gonna install the files in different places so pay close attention to the location of the files and where the files are to understand where the files are, ru are running from and that's going to show you information or it's going to allow you to decide whether this file or this process is suspicious or not. So, and you could do all that from here. Now, um, the great thing about sysinternal is that it refreshes automatically. So, any new processes that starts, uh, you're going to see it you know, kicking in in here. And also you can make it easy for you to read and see. For instance, as you could see, these columns are color coded and it's useful information, right? So if you like, if you come here to view and you experiment with the uh, different uh, views and options they have, uh, it is going to allow you to customize it in a way that is going to make more sense to your specific environment. As you could see right from here, you have the option of also um, k killing uh, processes, which is something that you can use from Task Manager as well. But again, Task Manager is not going to offer everything that that Process Explorer does, so it just might as well go to one location where you can do it all. And this is useful if you want to do uh, also um, document, um, again, because when you're doing uh, malware analysis or when you're troubleshooting anything and you want to create uh, a documentation, you want to collect as much information as possible and Process Explorer offers that information to you uh, you can create a, a dump file right from here just by right clicking on it, create dump. Uh, if you go to properties, and again, as I mentioned to you, you're going to see more information. Let me find something here that shows a, an active session. Uh, for instance, if I go, let me find um, Outlook. Right? I, and you know that Outlook, you know, if you go to properties in this case, um, you'll see that um, I have Outlook running in the background as you could see that it's got sessions established with remote host. And this is what you're going to be uh, looking for when troubleshooting suspicious activities in, in, your, in your network. Now, as you could see, it, it, tell, it tells me that I have my TCP session 
from my local computer. This is the local port, and I have uh, as a session established to this remote host. In this case, I know that I'm using Microsoft Outlook, and I know that these are Windows, that these are Microsoft servers, Microsoft's IP address. But uh, what about if you click on a file that you see an active sessions and you don't know what the other host is? So if I come down here, um, oh, this is the official documentation. If you go to sysinternals and you go to Process Explorer, you're going to see more information about it um, and where to download it, so on and so forth. So if I come here and I go to, uh, let me see, where do I have it? Actually, I have that in um, Firefox. But what I wanted to show you is that if you go, for instance, to Talos Intelligence and you go to Reputation Center and you type in the IP address in this case, and again, like I know this belongs to Microsoft, but if you see a suspicious files with suspicious activity having a remote session, you might want to do further investigation into what is that remote host that uh, session is connected to, right? So if I type the IP addresses that I see here, 52, 96, 69, 50, for instance, and I do a search, uh, you're going to see uh, basic information about uh, the uh, that IP address. I mean, this is the same thing you could have gotten if you went to who is. Uh, but, you know, again, like I like using Talos Intelligence because you have various functions within one single pane portal, right? So as you could see in this case, uh, this um, IP address belongs to Microsoft Azure or Azure. And, and again, I know that because I'm using Microsoft um, Outlook. Uh, but if you, if you had a suspicious activity or if you had a, a connection to a suspicious or a known um, malicious IP address, it'll display it right here, right? So this is how you combine different tools into one uh, to, to do one task, right? Like if you're doing analysis, you go to, you use a process plotter, then you go deeper into the process, then you get that information, then you have to go deeper into that remote session uh, to determine whether it is malicious or not. Uh, and you could do that. So um, again, like it, you have to adapt this to your environment, but this is, Basically, what I wanted to show you, make sure that you go through the options, uh, the various options that you have uh, to run the tools that you go through the view. This is very important, especially uh, selecting the columns so you don't see or see information that is not relevant to you. Uh, again, always pay attention to where the executables are running from, if the files are verified, if the certificate is verified, pay attention to that. If you see something that doesn't feel right, then do further investigation into it. Uh, th that, that's one of the many ways that you could use Process Explorer to troubleshoot, monitor, and secure your system environment. And I'm going to pause the video right here. I was hoping to make this uh, shorter, but I extended a little bit. And again, as always, if you liked this content, this video, just click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and I try to help you as much as I can. Have a great day, and I will talk to you on the next video.